I told you the Blackrock Pride would have been lucky at some point today or last night. There you go. The little Blackrock Cubs getting potentially their first taste of zebra. I'm not sure. I don't know if they've ever eaten zebra before, but they are so tiny. And we've got all of them gathered together, munching away on a zebra meal. With the migration back in town, it couldn't have arrived at a better time for these little guys. Because, of course, they're now just old enough to be eating meat. So it's the perfect possible moment for the zebra and the wildebeest to have wandered back into this area. Here we go. There's one of the proud mothers. And then off to the right a little bit are the rest of the suckling cubs all gathered together. I love, it. I love it when lionesses do that. <laughs> all, all cubs in tow. It's such a pity that she's behind a bush. But Can you sneak up a meter? Yes, I think that's a good idea, Ferg. We're just going to go forward just a fraction. Well, yeah, mm, well, that'll do. We'll take what we can get. Here we go, little cubs making a noise. Hello and welcome to the Maasai Mara here in Kenya where we have a truly beguiling family scene. Or perhaps it's beguiling to me because I'm used to the sight of the, the slight blood and gore. But all in all, part of the circle of life out here. Our quick introduction as to who I am and where we are. My name is Jamie and this afternoon Ferg is on camera with me, Fergus. And we are live from the Maasai Mara here in Kenya. We've been following this particular pride of lions for the past week as these tiny little cubs reach the stage where they go from cute little bundles of fluff to, well, cute little bundles of fluff that eat meat. So this is completely 100% live. We're here in Kenya, very, very close to the Tanzanian border. And these cubs have just got exceptionally lucky. The migration, the great migration of, of course, over a million wildebeest. And, oh, mom's got a puncture wound on her head. I only just noticed that. And of course, the over a million wildebeest and a couple of hundred thousand zebra have just recently completed their yearly journey through the Maasai Mara and back towards Tanzania. But it's never one solid movement and they often crisscross backwards and forwards. And fortunately for these little chaps, the migration has returned to their doorstep once more. Now, because this is live, it means that you can ask us questions as well. So please do that in the comments section below. We'd love to hear from you. Oh, Cheryl, you say these babies melt your heart. They melt mine too. And although it is, for some people, I think a little bit gory, it is, of course, the, the, the lions can't go and buy prepackaged meat from the grocery store. This is completely wild. And this is quite possibly one of their first tastes of zebra. They're only just old enough to start feeding on meat now. And the extraordinary thing is that while we do these Facebook broadcasts to all of you watching, is that you can actually watch the progress of these cubs as they grow up and as their story unfolds. There's nine of them in total. And they are utterly, utterly adorable. I think it's a very easy case to argue the fact that they are probably one of the cutest baby animals out here. Bev, welcome. I'm so glad to hear that you're watching. Bev's obviously been watching these little cubs before this. Bev wants to know if all nine cubs are here. I haven't been able to do a proper head count because they don't keep still. They're making my life very difficult. They, of course, don't know that. I definitely saw at least seven of them. So we've got four feeding here on the zebra carcass and then hidden behind the bushes are a couple more that are suckling from the female. So I, I haven't managed to do the head count, but I'm pretty sure that we'll find all nine here safe and sound. There, look, look, there you go, grabbing onto mum's tail. 
this really is a fantastic turn of luck for the cubs of the Black Rock Pride. Lioness growling a little bit in irritation. <laughs> Flicking her tail away from very sharp teeth. One desperate little cub still wanting to suckle. So although they're eating meat, they're still reliant on mum's milk, and they're going to be reliant on mum's milk for a good few weeks to come. Which means that they, their diet sort of moves between solid and liquid form quite slowly. You could just see one desperately sucking, clinging on for dear life, and rightly so. Because, of course, when it, the other cubs move in to have a drink, this little one might just lose the best possible spot. So it's worth staying on, even if mum has rolled over onto her back. Now, what's always fascinating to me when we watch these tiny, tiny, fragile-looking lion cubs when they are first brought to the kill, you always would think that, you know, they'd be pampered a little bit and gentled into the whole process. It's absolutely not the case, which brings us to David's question. David was saying, if the cubs show aggression to each other around food, will the mother intervene? Nope. And in fact, often you'll find that there are older cubs that push the younger cubs away from the kill and take the best parts of the kill, if they, of course, manage to push the lionesses away. It's basically every lion for themselves the moment the cubs are old enough to eat meat. The only time the lioness might intervene is if the cub gets in her way, in which case the cub might be on the receiving end of a bit of a smack and a snarl and a growl, or if perhaps the actions of the older cubs might be endangering those of the younger cubs, then the mother might step in. But otherwise, the cubs are left to fend for themselves. It's quite a tough life. It's a great thing being part of a pride. There's company, there's friendship, siblings, love from mum, even at the dinner table. But I think that might have been partly to get the blood behind the ears. But at the same time, it comes with its disadvantages, and that means competition for food. It really is a beautiful scene. It's been pouring with rain here in the southern portion of the Mara. The rain has cleared, and the lions are feasting. Look at the little spots on their heads. Aren't they gorgeous? Listen. the cubs. They're very, very vocal. <laughs> Such sweet sounds. And when you see mum like this next to them, it really gives you a perspective as first of all just how massive she is and just how tiny these cubs are. They're barely much larger than her head got many months of growing ahead of them but fortunately they're off to an exceptional start oh look at these cubs on the right <laughs> that is too sweet now proud a cat a mama of two you want to know how much a lion cub will weigh at birth only a couple of hundred grams, if I remember correctly. They really are very tiny when they're born. I must double check exactly how much they weigh, but they really are very, very small at birth. Born with their eyes closed, their eyes will only open at around about three days, sometimes even as late as 10 days old. And for those first few days, they are utterly helpless little creatures, entirely dependent on the protection of their mother and their instinct to stay hidden. Now at this age, they face a whole sort of different series of dangers. As they grow older, their curiosity starts to send them wandering a bit further afield. But sometimes exhaustion just takes over. All that growing means that sometimes you've just got to have a really good cat nap. <laughs> Was that zebra meal just too much, little one? That's what human beings feel like after a big Sunday lunch. Look at that gorgeous little face. 
and we're going to be saying goodbye to those of you joining us on Facebook. It's been wonderful sharing these little cubs. Keep your eyes tuned because we will be following the story of these cubs and we will be going live with them periodically throughout the course of the next few days. We'd love to share their stories with all of you wherever you happen to be. It's been lovely with you and we hope that you join us again soon. <laughs> How adorable is that? Oh, this is too sweet. Okay, babies, babies. Oh, hold on one second. Sorry, because mom's just moving the carcass. I don't know if you want to just stay for that moment. Okay, she seems to have dropped it. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and do a head count of the various cubs. And speaking of course of cubs, there's all sorts of babies around and about. We've seen baby topi, we've looked at baby lions. Now it's time to go back to South Africa to go and have a look at some baby hyenas. <laughs> 